Beware the idol's wrath. Huh. Wonder what that means. Oh, Jesus! Thank you all so much for your crazy support on my amnesia video. Be sure to leave a comment on this bad boy to be featured in the beginning of the next one. And if you are feeling so generous, then please spare me a like as well if you do enjoy this video, as it would really help me in my never-ending war against the almighty YouTube algorithm. And last but not least, I'd love to hand out a special thank you to my dear patrons Dauber underscore, Stin, Dano, Dotman, Jesse, and Bart. Thanks again, you goons. Much love and enjoy my rant? The Mad Lads at Naughty Dog accomplished something truly incredible. They created what would go on to become THE Sony mascot with three brilliant platformer- Okay, two brilliant platformers and a really good one. And arguably the greatest kart racer ever produced to this very day. Crash Bandicoot can now ride off into the sunset having lived the perfect life. And then these schmucks had to go and fuck it up. Long story short, Naughty Dog never actually owned Crash and was instead owned by Universal Interactive Studios, who was basically a big old cunt, which led to Naughty Dog going on to create Jack and Daxter, and Crash going on to become Walmart brand Mario Party. With a pretty incompetent story to boot. Not like the story really matters in a Party. game, but anyway, it starts off with Aku Aku and Uka Uka bickering in this floating temple. In space. And Uka Uka tries to square up with his brother, only for Aku Aku to remind him that he can't be beaten, and even if the emo board boy could lay the smackdown on his flamboyant brother's candy ass, the ancients would not allow this to happen. Yes, the almighty omnipotent ancients would never allow such a cataclysmic battle to take place. For those of you who don't know who the ancients are, as they've never been mentioned in the world of Crash Bandicoot before, Bandipedia doesn't seem to know either. Anyway, the Mass Brothers decide that they will hold a contest amongst mere mortals of their choosing to see if good or evil is best. The siblings draft their teams, but because Aku Aku doesn't have many friends, he has to steal some of his brother's players to even up the odds. Setting the good team as Crash, Coco, Dingo Dial, and Tiny versus the evil team of Cortex, Embryo, who should really be on the good team in the first place since he helped us beat Cortex and Crash too, but what? Koala Kong and <laughs> From here, you venture across several different warp rooms competing for trophies in various mini games to face bosses and move on to the next warp room in the ultimate conquest for galactic domination. The first mini game up is Crash Ball, with no crash to be found, where players on each side are defending their goalposts, and using your hover ship, you have to deflect the balls into the opponent's goal. As the game goes on, more balls are sent into the rink and start bouncing around super fast from everybody bonking them around with these power pushes you can do. It gets pretty hectic, but I actually had a ball with this one. It's really fun. Until you have to play it again, and again, and again! <laughs> because to win a trophy you have to win every level three times, which doesn't sound like the worst thing in the world, but keep in mind that means each minigame could potentially go nine rounds. Why can't you do that? Now for some of the minigames coming up that wouldn't be so bad, but in other cases like some of these later ball levels where you all have 20 lives each and are harder as is, being asked to potentially play up to 9 rounds? No thanks, I'd like to get this video done sometime this year. Well with that being said, no time to waste, next up is Polar Panic where you're each on a bear and you have to push each other off the little iceberg, and the last person remaining wins. There's also this thingy flying around which can offer the players powers which can either be a benefit or detriment to you, like becoming bigger so you can get bullied around becoming smaller so you can get bullied even more, a lightning power which zaps everybody, and then a 500 pound weight which just fucking kills you, which is baloney because gorillas can lift like 2,000 pounds. This level was alright, but definitely a bit janky. Sometimes I felt like my hits weren't even registering. And on top of that, my depth perception, I hate saying that word, was so off that I just kept zipping by people, but I'm willing to take the blame for that at least. Then we have Pogo Painter, where you have to jump on as many of the arena squares as possible to paint them with your color, and then bash this purple crate to turn the squares you painted into points. It's definitely my least favorite minigame from the first warp room as it can feel a bit tedious, and while there's the speed choose to help with that and predator missiles to spice things up, I feel like this game mode was really hindered by having to win three times. And finally, for the last level of warp room one, we have jungle bash, where you just beat the shit out of each other with stone crates, kicks, Road and ass. explosives, and you can collect wumper fruit to restore your health. I would make a pun and say it kicks ass, but it doesn't. It's Fine. Now that we've gathered a sufficient amount of trophies, it's time to take on our first boss, Papu Papu. You have to take out these crash clones and then throw crates at Papu Papu while he's laughing. At what? Who knows? 
knows? I assume himself since he's a fucking joke. Repeat three more times and it's an okay fight, I guess, but anything's an improvement over his poo 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 battle in Crash 1. But hey, all things considered, this is actually a pretty solid start so far. Eurocom doesn't have me ready to Eurocom yet, but I am very intrigued to see what they have in store moving forward. And oh look, it's Beach Ball, which is just Crash Ball, but now you can also magnetically grab the balls and quickly fire them back. It's a pretty minor addition that doesn't really warrant its own level in my opinion, but screw it, I really like this game mode anyway, so I'll let it slide. Then we move on to another pushing game called Tilt Panic, and this time the iceberg has no barrier and a walrus will jump on it to grab fish that fly out of the water. Fish? I still face the same depth and hit detection problems, so I'm already starting to get seasick of this mini game. And now it's time for another pogo game. Okay, this is really starting to get old. It doesn't help that there's not even any difficulty to this one since all you have to do is make squares to redeem points and you don't even have to break any boxes so you can just keep moving in the same spot over and over. Speaking of over and over, it's time for another game of crash and bash and blow shit up. And the only gameplay difference here is now when Nitro and TNT explode, the tile beneath disappears. But you know what? I actually really like that change this was pretty fun and now it's time for the second ball oh wait there's actually a new mini game and it's fucking trash so basically it's this tank warfare game where you're crammed into these tight corridors getting bombarded with explosives from every angle even your own shots can ricochet and come back to bite you i can't even begin to tell you how many times i got cornered and bullied by these jerk offs i desperately wanted a new mini game and now i sound like a dickhead because what i got sucked well hopefully the second boss won't be such a disappointment Oh, you gotta be shitting me. We've got to play the same mini games even more for crystals and gems now, too? I'm sorry, but this feels like I'm doing chores now. I just want to move on with my life, but instead I'm stuck doing these challenges where you're put at a disadvantage like stricter time limits or not being allowed to pick up crates in a game about having to pick up crates and throw them to kill people. <laughs> Honestly, if you only had to win one round or even two to get a trophy and be done with these games, I think the alterations made would be enough to satisfy my peanut brain. But playing them over and over just gets so tiresome. So to throw these on top too now as mandatory is just... <laughs> At least the game's generous enough to only make you win the crystal and gem challenges once, but man, that doesn't change the fact that this game's harder than me when Crash 4 was announced. This looks awesome! First of all, let me reiterate, these tank levels are terrible, like what am I supposed to do? The second tank level is even worse than the first one because now the corridors are even tighter. And guess what? The next new minigame ain't even much better, which are these dickheaded racing levels where you can cheaply win by just hugging the inside of the track. But when you're not doing that, you're getting bonked all over the place more than taking a shoulder tackle from Braun Strowman. And that's just the first iteration of this game mode. The second one is way worse too because now there's <laughs> of toxic waste everywhere so good luck not bumping into those. There's also this goopy goof who blocks your view so you can't see if you're even turning properly Dumbass. racing back around. And he sends out a seed to sabotage you. Did I mention that the other racers once again are watch massive out, out. You guys know me by now, I love a good challenge and I hate to sound like a bitch, but come on. On, dude, some of these mini games are just unfair. Like, this is such a load of crap, man. I swear, so many of the tank mini game rounds I won were out of pure luck, except for the jungle one because that one actually gave you room to breathe. Now, if you want to talk about good, fun, fair challenges, then let's talk about the rest of the bosses because the rest of them are really good, starting with the Bearminator. So the big old bear fires other smaller mechanical bears which you have to push off the tilting platform. Once they're dealt with, you fire missiles into his ugly coke guzzling base. With each round that passes, the Bearminator destroys a section of your platform, giving you less and less room to evade the waves of enemies. You do what you just did for three rounds and you win. This is a really, really solid fight. And funnily enough, I didn't feel any of the clunkiness with the controls here compared to every other time I played one of these mini games. Moving on to the third boss, Big Bad Fox, which made me cry out a big bad because good lord this is hard, but in the best way possible. That's what she said. <laughs> the boss or bosses in this instance are the Komodo Bros, who we battle in a tank against their machine on <laughs> The first phase of the fight consists of you having to gun down these cannons. Then it transitions to you having to destroy satellite dishes projecting balls of energy at you. And once you take care of them, you then have to take out two missile launchers. And once you've done all of that, then the Komodo Bros rise up piloting their own tanks for a 2v1 confrontation. This was a very hard fought battle, but one that was incredibly fun. Honestly, this claims the throne is my favorite boss fight in the Crash franchise so far. Or 
at least it would have had the next boss not have been the out of this world <laughs> battle with nitrous oxide. It begins with you simply pursuing him through an asteroid field while avoiding all the obstacles in the way already, as well as all the nitro he lays down, which was already pretty difficult. Then it turns into a one-on-one -on -one game of ballistics where it's already hard enough to score on this guy, but now you've got missiles heading your way and a red ball that occasionally spawns in, which will kill you on impact. This was super fast paced, super challenging, and super fun. This game's put me through a lot of pain, but I was really happy to end it on a high note. Speaking of ending on a high note, now that evil has prevailed, Uka Uka has all the crystals somehow and is going to kill us all. Dark. Overall. Oh my god, there's another warp room and I need 17 gold relics just to unlock the first level? I'm done. No, you're not. You're not done. You're not leaving. Because if you leave, you get nothing! You understand me? Nothing! Overall, as frustrating as this game can be, Crash Bash has its upsides. The music is fantastic for one thing, even the 80s softcore porn track. I was honestly pretty convinced it was Josh Mansell for a while there, but it turns out Steve Duckworth did a wonderful job with the music. While some of the alterations made to games weren't too interesting, there were a few that were really fun, like the disappearing tiles in Space Bash, or in Melt Panic where you could pick up bombs and just fucking kill the other players. Even if some of the minigames were just straight up bullshit, when things were going right and things were fair, this game showcased a very competent difficulty curve. But again, on the other hand, a good chunk of these minigames really felt like they were one with pure luck and no skill. And some of the games just felt like they were taking forever to complete because, well, some of them just weren't that fun. Polar Push was unresponsive, the Pogo games were pretty slow, don't even get me started on the tank and racing games, and then the... Oh yeah, I forgot to talk about the last minigame, Medieval Mayhem, because nothing is quite as chaotic as popping balloons. And it's a... Alright game, I guess, but you see what I mean? The only game here I really enjoyed was the one with all the balls in my face, and all the others ranged from okay to downright awful. Yes, of course, this is a party game, and I'm sitting here alone in my room playing it, so it's not gonna be as fun as it should be, as if I don't play with myself alone in my room enough already. But even if I were to play this with friends, I still think Ballistics is the only game mode we'd really have a lot of fun with. Ultimately, Crash Bash does have its shining moments, but at the end of the day, I grew tired of bashing Crash and just wanted someone to bash in my skull.